Hey everyone, long time no see. Um, making a video like this is, is always interesting because there's a lot of unsureness. Is that even a word? Um, I, where you don't really know what's going to happen and a lot of things are out of your control. Um, obviously, we, if you know me, Nathaniel Rumpeljance, the, the, the guy, the, the man, the voice, uh, the spirit behind this Nintendo Prime YouTube channel... Uh, you know that there's been a lot of ups and downs with the channel pretty much from the get-go. Uh, things were, did go smooth for a little while, but at least this year in 2019, you know, started with me losing uh, the job that gave me the income to support me even able, being able to do this, and then um, got things a little bit on track heading into E3, and then E3 went almost according to plan. There's still videos from E3 that I don't have done that at this point are just redundant to even put out there. And... Then, obviously, uh, we, we, we had my accident um, and everything in between. And if you don't know all the details on that, that's fine. It's, it's, it's more personal related. It doesn't really have to do with you guys. But uh, the heart attack as well. Um, there's a public video on that up talking about the heart attack situation. So there's just been a lot that has happened in 2019. 2019 has been, for lack of a better word, kind of a shit show here at Nintendo Prime. We had all this amazing momentum heading into this year, and then I literally pissed it away over the course of this year. Um, even at the beginning of the year, uh, when I when I lost my job and we had this big surge of support on Patreon, uh, I, I failed to deliver on, on promises on Patreon. I failed to deliver on content promises. I failed to deliver on giveaway promises. I have failed not only uh, the our, our patrons, who I feel the, the, the just the absolute worst for, um, especially over the last few months, I have failed you guys, the viewers. I've not given you consistent daily content like I planned. I have not kept uh, other ambitions and plans going. And I've been weighing a lot over the last few months, um, you know, in, in wake of my health situation and everything. And I'm, I'm, I'm improving. I'm losing weight. Everything's going fine. Hopefully I'll be where I want to be here a year from now. Uh, in terms of health and, and, and happiness and my, my family and everything. And hopefully everything all works out. But the thing is, um, while I'm sitting here kind of reshuffling my channel a bit and, and trying to figure out what I really want to do with this place, um, YouTube decides to come out and throw a wrench into everything. Uh, I'm sure by now it, it's almost impossible for you not to have noticed because so many different YouTubers have made videos on it. Um, Arlo is one that I, I know is related to this community that you guys might, might have seen. Um, basically, YouTube lost a lawsuit to, to COPPA. Um, it, it's weird because <laughs> YouTube is technically COPPA compliant, uh, but publicly said a lot of really stupid things. So to even be on YouTube, to even make a YouTube account, to comment on a YouTube video, to have ads served to you on YouTube... You have to be 13 years, years or older. That is a requirement on YouTube that actually makes them COPPA compliant because children are considered anything under the age of 13. So technically, YouTube has been COPPA compliant this whole time. But then they decided to create a YouTube Kids app. And then they also decided to go ahead and talk about publicly in many different ways how YouTube is the number one platform for kids. It's got all the best content for kids. It's competing with the best of the kids' cable uh, you know, channels like Disney and Nickelodeon, PBS. And in doing that, they inevitably drew the attention of, well, the FTC. Because the FTC had not been really regulating anything on YouTube. And obviously the FTC's goal is to try to protect children. Now, I think there's obviously a fine line between protecting children and allowing parents to be parents. And I definitely think a lot of the problems on YouTube, uh, a lot of the problems that some children have with YouTube, watching inappropriate stuff or, or, or whatever the case might be, is strictly on the parents and them not paying attention to what media their children are consuming. That has been a, a parent problem going back to the 90s when we used to blame, actually it still happens today, blame video games for violent behavior. They, you know, just parents don't keep up on stuff and don't pay attention to what's happening and the generation groups below them uh so like if a parent isn't interested in video games they don't understand what's going on in the video game realm hence they don't really monitor their kids very well if they aren't people that use their phones a lot or they don't watch a lot of youtube or netflix or whatever kids could be consuming a lot of different things and the parents will be blissfully unaware of what's actually influencing their child so uh i do put a lot of blame at the, at the feet of parents here but basically 
YouTube was serving targeted ads and they were advertising the fact that they knowingly had a lot of children on their platform, even though their terms of service say you need to be 13 years or older. But YouTube was acknowledging that there was millions upon millions of people under the age of 13 on their platform. So basically YouTube knew there were a bunch of kids either on their parents' accounts or straight up making YouTube accounts and lying about their age. YouTube knew about it and did nothing. Instead, YouTube allowed targeted ads to happen, which is where they are collecting information on minors under the age of 13, which is against the law. And this is what led to the whole FTC COPPA uh, lawsuit with YouTube that they lost and had to pay like $176 million or whatever, whatever it is they had to pay. And it's not like, oh my gosh, that's the end of YouTube because YouTube's owned by Google and Google's like one of the biggest companies in the world. So that's like a drop in the bucket for them. But YouTube as a platform is an interesting place because YouTube on its own is basically an entity that barely breaks even every year. It's not really a massive for-profit venture for Google. I don't know if you guys are, are well aware of this. YouTube is more valuable uh, for its user base than it is for the money it generates. So uh, YouTube does generate a bunch of revenue for a whole bunch of us. I make money off YouTube. A bunch of other YouTubers do as well. But uh, YouTube has to fit all the bills. They have to pay for the servers. They have to pay for the developers and the customer support, which we all know isn't that great anyways. They still have to pay for what they do have. Uh, and when you get to the end of it, YouTube itself isn't really a big for-profit venture. It never has been. And I don't think any proper video hosting platform ever really can be a massive for-profit venture. Uh, I, I, it's just almost impossible because just because of the cost of bandwidth alone and, and keeping servers up and uptime and the, and the hundreds of thousands and millions of people using it, it it's going to be impossible for it to be for-profit. But the thing is, what happened in wake of this is YouTube is basically scared. Um, they are washing their hands of their responsibilities moving forward, and they put it all on us. Now, that's not, you know, the end of the world. I mean, we should try to be FTC and COPPA compliant as, as a content creator. I should I should know the laws, and I know I don't, I don't have a lawyer at my disposal all the time to go over those laws with me to, to figure out what I can and can't do. Uh, but YouTube is basically putting it at our feet. And they're doing this in a number of ways. One, I had to recently select if my channel is intended to be targeted to children. Now, intent um, and what they consider to be targeted to children are two different things. My channel is not intended for kids. If you are someone under the age of 13 watching my content, I'm not making this video for you. I'm not making any of my videos for you. I realize 6% of my audience are under the age of 13 and are watching this content, and I can't control that. But... 94% of my audience is over the age of 13. Uh, it's it's something crazy like 87% of my audience is over the age of 18. So my channel is very much targeted towards adults, talking about what people might consider children's games that adults happen to enjoy, the Marios, the Zeldas, and all that stuff of the world, Animal Crossing, Pokemon, etc. cetera. Uh, and so you would figure I'm safe because I don't target content to kids. Um, I also don't swear excessively most of the time, especially off live streams. And uh, so I, I should be an advertiser-friendly face when it comes to just the, the, the generalness of the content. Not maybe the drama, but the generalness of the content that I talk about, be it news, um, opinions, you know, whatever. Whatever I happen to be doing. Here's the thing, though. Um, they're going to have a bot going around. And if uh, YouTube's bot thinks that your content is improperly marked, um, like if I, if I take a, a video on Pokemon Sword and Shield and I say, this isn't intended for children, this is intended for adults, and they say, no, it's intended for children, um, I am up to liable to a fine. Uh, uh, basically, I could be fined by the FTC up to, this doesn't mean they're going to do it, but up to $42,000 per video that I mark as not for kids that is deemed as for kids. Now, it needs to be deemed as for kids by the FTC. So even if YouTube's algorithm bot says it's for kids, it doesn't mean the FTC is going to agree with them. Um, but the general rules on what content is for kids is very, very broad. It's so broad that nobody knows how this is going to be approached. Now, it could just be broad because they aren't sure which content they want to go after in the future. Um, obviously, they're going to be going after some of that creeper content that, that does exist on YouTube. Um, they're going after, for sure, toy unboxings and stuff like that. There, there's a bunch of, you know, Blippy stuff like that where you would think like a, like something like Blippy that my kids watch would, should be considered safe uh, and fine for my children, and I think it is as a parent. But um, 
you know, it, it's got to come under the rules and regulations. And YouTube has basically made it so kids content, if you do make kids content, you can continue to make kids content, but YouTube might randomly delete channels that aren't making any money. Uh, kids content can't make money anymore, or I should say it can't make any money. Um, it can't have targeted ads, which when you look at the back end, that makes up 80 to 90% of your revenue off ads is targeted ads. So that basically kills children's content if children's content only source of revenue is ads and this is in addition to the fact that you, you can't do a bell notification anymore um, the subscribe button is going to vanish on the videos although you can still click on the channel and do it um, you are not going to be uh, having notifications sent out you're not going to be having um, your, your video show up and recommended anymore etc obviously the youtube's kids app is probably going to have to get nuked uh, and this all goes into effect on january 1st 2020 so it's, it's coming up quick and you might think, well, Nate, what do you have to worry about? Because you don't, you don't talk about, you know, you don't do children's toys unboxings. I mean, well, I mean, are Amiibo considered that? I've done that before. So what's a, what's a children's toy? Anything intended that, it, that a children might play? You could argue Nintendo Switch is a children's toy, even though adults play it. You could argue that Pokemon Sword and Shield and Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild and Animal Crossing and pretty much any game Nintendo makes that's rated E um, could be considered targeting children. Um, the, the, the broad definitions they're using are basically anything that a child might enjoy. Um, and this includes if you make thumbnails or titles that might entice um people to click now they're not saying clickbait per se but what they are saying is things like if your if your thumbnails have bright colors in them which of course they do not all of my thumbnails this one my thumbnails are more darker colors with a with a lighter uh, text on it or something but if you have a brighter thumbnail which is eye-catching that could be considered like you're targeting kids even though adults click on that stuff too do you kind of see the conundrum we're running into here it's that a lot of the content that us adults enjoy kids enjoy too and this leaves youtube as the only safe content being the edgy content and the edgy content is the exact stuff youtube told everyone you can't make money on anymore just a year ago so we're left in this situation where we don't know where the future of youtube is going and we don't know if channels like mine um or heck, even, even spawn wave and others arlo in particular because he's an actual puppet even though a majority of his audience is adults it doesn't matter they could deem you're a puppet you clearly target children, even though he doesn't. Um, we're not sure what's going to happen. We don't know how hard the FTC is going to come down. Now, I think channels like mine will probably be okay because I'm not very big. At least I'll be okay for a while. I say this because um, I don't do prime family videos anymore. I can't have my children appear on camera anymore or any of that. That's fine. I can comply with that. That's not a huge deal. They weren't a big part of my channel anyways. But um, what I have to be mindful of is that um the ftc could decide at any point that my content is that but the ftc is not very well funded this is not something that's been talked about in enough videos uh there's been a lot of scare tactics going out there this that this that all you know they're going to nuke half of youtube on january 1st reality is the ftc as much as they might want to run around finding everyone they don't have the people or the backing financially uh to be scouring millions of youtube channels and billions of videos uh, and going after each individual video. They just don't. They, they just don't have the funding and the backing to do it. They can go after like a big entity such as YouTube, you know, such as Google and all that, but like going after individual users has always been a problem. This is why even though it's illegal to download music, you know, off of YouTube or, you know, off the internet in general, unless you purchase it, if you just illegally download it, technically you could be held individually viable or liable for that download up to a really massive fine for each song that you downloaded. Individuals are not often gone after. They go after the websites that are providing the um, ability to get this stuff illegally, right? Because that's easier to go after because the FTC does not really have the manpower to go after everyone individually. Now, if you are a huge channel, you know, if you... If you're approaching, you know, a million, if you're a million subscribers, let's say you're like beat em ups or something. If you're like a million plus, I think channels like that, game explains of the world, um, have a much greater chance of running into problems because they are bigger, easier to find, easier to target. Whereas someone like me, you could still find me and recommend it and this and that on, on some of these videos. But in general, uh, I, I mean, I'm going to fly under the radar, I think, for a while. 
And I think the game explainer and others might fly under the radar as well, too. And it might turn out that our content is fine and perfectly okay and that we can keep doing it. We don't know how they're going to target video game content in particular. Video games are listed as something that uh, on their thing that, you know, appeals to children. But, you know, are they just talking about Minecraft and Roblox or are they talking about all video games in general? And even then, is that fair to Minecraft channels who have might have a majority 13 plus audience? Uh, is that fair to them? Like, what's going to happen to PewDiePie? I mean, he's been doing a lot of Minecraft. You obviously know about his nine-year-old army. What's going to happen there? Are they going to go after him? Um, there's a lot of unknowns uh, in what's going to happen here because we don't know what the FTC's goal is here other than to try to get rid of targeted ads on children's content. We don't know what the FTC is going to rule as children's content on an individual level. So a lot of this is just an, an unknown territory. We don't know what's going to happen. Either channels like mine can continue to thrive and flourish and, and, and PewDiePie and everyone else out there can continue to flourish and do what we want, or uh, the FTC is going to come in and basically destroy YouTube as we know it. Um, and that's going to leave content creators like me uh, either looking for another platform or just be done creating content altogether. Uh, and that's what makes it hard right now when I'm in the middle of a transition at my channel uh, to making maybe less content than I originally wanted to, but I'm creating more focused content on what I, I really want to make. I have, I have you know some top 10s in the work. I have a potential game of the year thing I, I, I want to get in the works for to launch, ironically, on January 1st. Um, I have... Uh, some reworking and reshuffling I'm trying to do with the Nintendo Prime podcast to get that back, especially for you patrons. I know I owe you a billion episodes of that at this point. Um, I am working on getting that back on track, regular guests, all that. I want to make it an amazing show. I want to make it the best possible show it can be when, when it comes back. Um, so I'm working on that. And I'm working on a, a, just a lot of individual videos. And obviously, I've talked about even you know possibly bringing back Prime News on Sundays. That is something I'm still seriously in contemplation over. But I'm worried about starting all this up and then I get going in this good flow all the way through December and then I get to January and my videos are just hit, 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 and then I get fined. And if I get even one fine of $42,000, I'm done. My family's ruined. Not just this channel. My literal family is ruined. And that's a pretty big risk um, for me to take on not knowing if my content is going to be deemed as for children or not. And I'm not going to start cussing at the beginning of my videos to try to get the algorithm to run away from my video because I swore on it. I'm not going to change who I am to suit them. So I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about this whole situation. Um, I have more content planned, and I'm sorry this is the first video that you're getting this week, but uh, I needed to address this and get it off my mind so I can kind of clear the air before I work, move on to other things. Anyways, I'm sure you can hear my kids a little bit in the background. They're, they're getting kind of antsy, so I got to go. I thank you guys for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojans from the Tunnel Prime. I love you guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.